Good morning, Mount Vernon Middle School, and welcome back to The Buzz. My next guest I'm very excited about is Mr. Prince. Um, I asked him to come on the show so he could tell you guys a little bit about what he's been up to lately. Uh, as most of you know, or you should know, he is also not just our principal, he is active duty military. And so ever since we've been working from home, Mr. Prince has been out there doing his other job with the military. So I'm going to let him tell you just a little bit about what he has been up to. We're going to talk to him, going to ask him some questions. So Mr. Prince, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ketterman. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? No, I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm very glad to be here this morning to be able to talk to you. Good. Thank you. Um, I was just telling the students that, you know, you've been in the military for a long time now. So um, what, when did you get started? When did you enlist? Okay. So, yeah, I, uh, I enlisted in 2004. Uh, I was 19 years old. Uh, I originally started as an infantryman and was in a unit down towards Cincinnati. I went to basic training in Fort Benning, Georgia, which is the home of the infantry. Um, and then after finishing basic training and doing a couple of uh, a couple of months after training, I got back into college, finished my degree, and then in the military, if you have a degree, you can become an officer. So I decided to go the officer route and went through another round of training that took about two years and got my commission. Um, and when I did that, I switched over to the field artillery and I've been in the field artillery ever since. Um, I'm now a major and I'm a part of the first of the 134 field artillery, which is out of Delaware, Ohio. And I've been doing this for 16 years. Um, during that time, I served in Hurricane Katrina. Um, and then in Afghanistan in 2011, 2012, and then now I'm a part of Operation Steady Resolve uh, for the COVID-19 response here in Ohio. And what is the, the goal of um, Steady Resolve? So uh, the National Guard is a very unique military force. So a lot of people think of the National Guard as being um, only somebody who serves in, in, the, in their own country um, in Ohio, but actually the National Guard serves both the President of the United States of America as well as the Governor. And so um, whenever we take our oath of office, we swear our allegiance to um, the President of the United States as well as the Governor and the people uh, of the United States of America. Where if you're an active duty member and you only serve the active duty uh, army, then you only swear your allegiance to, um, to the president. So during times like this, whenever there's a state of emergency, then the governor has the ability to activate the National Guard, um, which is what he did shortly after we got out of school. Um, it was about four or five days after uh, we, we stopped going to school is when they activated the National Guard. And then ever since then, I've been a part of Operation Steady Resolve. So Operation Steady Resolve, <clears throat> primarily, uh, we are, National Guard members are a part of your community. Um, National Guard members, there's, there's roughly, clo there's close to 11,000 total National Guard members in the state of Ohio. Wow. They live throughout the state of Ohio. They live in your communities, and they are... Um, activated now in order to do exactly that, which is to help other community members. So our main mission is to um, operate out of food banks. And the reason is, is because, because all the volunteers that normally work at food banks, they're not allowed to go in. And the overwhelming response needed due to the fact that a lot of people have lost their jobs, um, they're doing about three times the amount of food prep. So we have gone in and and began packet, packaging lots and lots of food in order to get out to our communities. And then we're also helping on the medical sector um, because a lot of nurses, um, doctors, people who work um, closely with patients, uh, they also become sick at times. And so the National Guard has come in to help there. And then 
Um, we're also helping with the prisons um, here in Ohio due to the same reason. Um, the guards that work there and the, and the nurses, that if they get this, get sick, then the National Guard comes in and fills in for them. Okay. Um, that is, that's incredible. Um, I am, <clears throat> I'm proud to say, you know, when anybody ever asks about like, well, work and how's work and what are things. Um, and I always talk about what a privilege it is for us to uh, have someone in our building and leading us who not only knows what it means to be a leader educationally, but also out in the real world making a difference just outside of the educational aspect of things. So um, thank you, first of all, for everything. You Thanks, do. Mr. Cagman. For the I appreciate that. For the community. Um, is there anything else that you think it would be good for our students to know um, in terms of, you know, what it is, uh, how, how that balance works for you as being our principal and being in the military? Like, sure, absolutely. During, during so let the me start. School year when things are a little more normal. Yeah. So let me start with this, because um, this is definitely not normal. Uh, I miss everybody at school a ton. Um, I miss being able to see students each and every day, uh, to be able to see them in the lunchroom, in the hallways, give high fives, uh, give the old elbow bump. Um, yeah, and, we're going to have to switch reason, that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's going to be doing the flu bump for a long time. But um you know, the reason I got into into education is because I want to be able to influence um, kids the same way that I was influenced. And so um, when it comes to continuing to serve my country, it's because I feel that by serving the schools and serving the country that I'll be able to mentor uh, young kids in order to uh, have that sense of service, which I think is so incredibly important, which is why we do service day at our school, which is unfortunate this year um, that we weren't able to do so. But, um, you know, I love what I do and I love our school. And when it comes to balancing things, it's a delicate balance, especially when I have three small children at home yeah. and then a thousand. I tell people I have a thousand children at school and I got three small children at home and I'm not sure which one's more difficult. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a delicate balance, but setting your priorities, um, each and every day, uh, when I wake up, the first thing I do is I have what I call my big three. Um, what are the, the three things today that are going to make me successful? And so I know that it's been a challenge for each and every one of you at home as you are going through, uh, virtual learning. It's a challenge for our teachers as well. What I would encourage you to do is that every day that you wake up, take, some time and set a quick three goals for your day. Um, I like to set my goals as being something personal, something that's work related and something that's family related. Uh, and if I can meet all three of those goals, I may not be a hundred percent successful all day, but if I can meet those three goals, then, then that means I'm heading in the right direction and my arrows are pointed in the right way. So if I can encourage you to do that, each and every one of you should do it. That was actually going to be my next question is what is something you could tell us about, um, you know, discipline and leadership that we could apply to our lives for those of us who, who aren't serving, uh, took the words and uh -huh. went ahead and answered it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, well, go ahead. No, I. Yeah. D discipline. Um, is is everything and, and normally when people think of discipline they think of punishment uh, but discipline is actually about teaching um, and so you know having self-discipline is teaching yourself to be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish each and each and every day and so um, again starting with those three things uh, setting those goals each and every day is the start of discipline and then throughout your day uh, you make thousands of decisions. And so if you have those three goals that are set and you go to make your decision or there's something that pops up and it's, hey, I could sit down and watch Netflix for a while, but if I do, 
uh, then I'm not going to be able to meet my goal, which I set. And by saying, I'm not going to do that. I had a goal. I'm not, that's, that's discipline. It's, it's that simple. Um, it sounds simple, but we all know that it's not easy. And so if I can encourage you to start small, start with those three things and then, and build upon it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that, um, I've been talking to, when I talked to Mrs. Sivert the other day, we were talking about motivation and, um, I think those two things go hand in hand, you know, what's motivating us right now and how can we be disciplined because maybe I should go for a run and maybe I've ended up sitting on the couch eating Oreos and watching Netflix. Maybe. I'm not saying it happened, but it's possible. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it's also important to have somebody who's tied into your goals uh, because it becomes much easier to slack on your goals if somebody doesn't know about them. So I would also encourage you that once you set your big three for the day, write them down. Uh, I got them on my board back here. Um, is where I put my, my goals for the day. Uh, but tell somebody about them. That way they can hold you accountable because uh, everybody needs somebody in order to help them. So, yeah. Well, Mr. Prince, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, I know that you are really busy, so I personally appreciate you taking the time for it. I know that um, everybody who's watching is grateful for everything you do day in and day out and not just for us as Mount Vernon Middle School but for us as citizens of Mount Vernon and Ohio so um so thank you uh, is there anything else yeah, no problem anything else you want to share with us before you go nope just that I miss you guys and I can't wait uh to where we can get back together and and be walking through the halls together so um, for all of you eighth graders that are moving on, uh, um, we will be sure to give you a proper MVMS farewell whenever we get back to school. For you sixth and seventh graders, I'm pumped uh, for the beginning of next year uh, and that, you know, hopefully we can uh, be able to do that in person, but just know that whenever we are able to come back together, it's going to be an awesome time as it always is at Mount Vernon yes. Middle School. So thank yes. you. Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Prince, and stay safe. Absolutely. Have a good one. You too. Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> okay. Welcome to my car. I'm in my car, you may wonder, for a specific reason, and that is because we're doing carpool karaoke today, and joining me is Mrs. Smith. Hi. As I'm sure anybody that has met her knows, Mrs. Smith loves to sing. So she's going to sing, you. and we're doing our own carpool karaoke. So whenever you're ready, Mrs. Smith, take it away. I've been staring at the edge of the water Long as I can remember Never really knowing why I wish I could be the perfect daughter But I come back to the water No matter how hard I try Every turn I take, every trail I track, every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know where I cannot go, where I long to be. See the line where the sky needs to see, it calls me, and no one knows how far it goes. If the wind in my sail on the sea stays behind me, one day I'll know If I go there's just no telling how far I'll go I know everybody on the island Seems so happy on the island Everything is by design What? What? Look. I know everybody on the island Has a role on this island So maybe I can roll with mine I can lead with pride, I can make us strong, I'll be satisfied if I play along with the voice inside, sings a different song, what is wrong with me? 
carpool karaoke mrs smith no problem i loved it well good and if anybody wants to hear a specific song shoot me an email and let me know and we'll see if we can work that in sometime right. until next time this has been carpool karaoke on the buzz bye welcome back to the buzz my next guest is mrs mccoy and maybe you know maybe you don't know she loves cats. So she's here today and she's going to talk to us some about what it is to be a cat owner and some of her favorite things about her cats. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, and I think, I think an appropriate way is to like, talk about what it means to be a cat lady. Oh, okay. Okay. Some would actually say crazy cat lady. <laughs> crazy cat lady. Yeah. Yeah. They are my children. Well, and mine decided to walk in here too. Oh so, man! Yeah. So why don't you tell us about your cats? Okay, I have four. Okay. I have four cats. Um, it starts with Munster. 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 In like the YouTube. cheese. Yes. And that's exactly how uh, he got his name. So if you don't mind, I'm actually going to try to pick him up. Yeah, sure. Cats are sometimes cooperative. They're currently swimming around me. One more. <laughs> Come here, monster. Oh. So, this is Munster. Aww. He's a nice 15-pound male. <laughs> He's That's a, a big, big cat. <laughs> He is a big boy. Uh, so he is orange. And so that's why when we got him, we wanted to go with like a, a cheese. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like cheddar. Sure. So we thought of Munster just because it was a little more creative. Yeah, uh, a little different. He's, he's one of the most lovey cats of the bunch. He will crawl up and like be helped just like a baby. Wow. He loves it. I had a cat once that would not let me near it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's a lovey boy, that's for sure. Um, so I want to say he's probably seven. Okay. Seven years old now. So, um, yep, he's he's the only boy besides my husband, but let's go. <laughs> of the cats, come on. The only boy um, cat, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then after that comes Zoe. Okay. Um, Zoe, actually, both Munster and Zoe, we both got out of Licking County. We lived in Newark at the time, so we got them from the cat shelter there. Okay. Zoe was the one who, if you are familiar with Shrek. Yeah. Um, Puss in Boots. Yeah. Giant eyes. <sighs> so she was still fairly, like, almost borderline kitten adult, and she hadn't fully grown back into her head, so her eyes were big and green. So when we went into the room, like, she just meowed and just had the big eyes of, like, take me home. <laughs> and you can't say no to that. Uh, no. So I'm going to see if I can grab Zoe just so you can see her. Okay. Oh, it's okay, baby girl. Um, she is uh, 16 pounds. Wow. Um, yeah, our, our cats are on diets these days. Okay, well, I mean. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's just at the beginning, you know, like, let them eat. Right. 
Well, at, at the beginning, the first two had some portion control problems. Well, and I know a lot of people's hobby right now is eating. Yeah. Me. It's a danger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what should I do? I guess I'll go eat. <laughs> yeah. What else I can find? Yeah, so I get that. Your cats, your cats and I have that in common. <laughs> I'm bored. I just want to sleep and eat. Why, Why not? not? <laughs> yeah, uh, Zoe is, um, I am her favorite. <laughs> okay. I could say that. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but she's, well, kind, of, she's kind of my favorite. I get it. I get it. She's a mama's girl. She's a scaredy cat. Anytime oh. the doorbell rings or anyone comes over she like darts hides under the bed so she is where we get the phrase scaredy cat yes jumps at loud noises she's not very friendly she doesn't want to greet any guests and i mean she's not mean but she's just no i don't know you i don't want to be around you all right to each their own yeah Yeah. so who who else you got there um i got a lexi and an aria Okay. So Zoe, that was her name originally. Um, Lexi and Aria. I got, I got, we got Lexi over the summer, and a little guilty pleasure of mine that summer was to watch Vampire Diaries. Okay. So Lexi is a character from Vampire Diaries. My husband hates it, knowing like that's where we found her name, but it is. So Lexi is right here next to me. She was a little runt of the bunch. She's a calico. Aww. They're known as being a little bit more sassy. As she does not want to be held. She's the most friendly to guests, but what means like taking her to the vet? She's, no. She's a sassy thing. Sassy. Wasn't there a movie with a cat named Sassy? Yes, Homeward Bound. Oh, Homeward yeah. Homeward Bound. So, um, for those of you who don't know, which was probably a lot of you, there was a movie in the early 90s, so a long time ago. <laughs> and there was, um, it's about these three pets that get lost, two dogs and a cat, and the cat's name is Sassy. Uh, it's probably on Disney+. Plus. So if you have Disney+, Plus, you could go watch Home Yeah, Movie. I bet it is. And the cat, um, I think, if I remember right, that cat in that movie looks a lot like Mrs. DeBolt's cat. <gasps> yes. Um, I forget what breed of cat that is yeah i don't know there it's more of a long hair my cats are all i mean mutts if you will but yeah i think it, it, that cat looks a lot like mrs DeBolt's cat yeah more of a yeah. long hair type yeah. thing um the okay last, so then you said you have aria yeah so aria again um another guilty pleasure show called pretty little liars okay. i am a teenage girl when it comes to my tv choices no judgment <laughs> So Ari, my husband often calls her Ari. Okay. That's reason why that go, go on. Oh, now Zoe wants out. But let me at least show you. Aria. Come here, baby girl. Ooh. She's the newest to the family. We got her last summer. She was a stray all by herself. She was a baby kitten um, outside my husband's work. Okay. So it was over the summer. I got the call from my husband just saying, hey, honey. I found this kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so the others we had gotten from the shelter. So she was, Aria was the first like true just stray. She is a bolt of energy still. Wow. Well, yeah. Mean, even like some of the other kittens, like when they were kittens, they'd have energy. She's like a tornado, like, or just like zoom, zoom. She'll just fly around the house and just go crazy. So um, what would you say is, the best thing about being a cat lady and what is the worst thing about being a cat lady sometimes they fight which i don't know if you just heard that i did sometimes they fight just like you know anyone siblings else. yep yep and that was the sassy one i told you she's a little sassy mm -hmm. um, is she the boss like does she tell the other three what to do kind of kind mm -hmm. of i'm actually going to open the door because i have them trapped That's okay probably not helping their case so <laughs> Here you go, guys. There you go. Give them that freedom to come and go if they want. Um, the best thing for me, though, I think is I, I've, I've had good experiences with cats, and I've heard that's not always the case. Yeah. But 
I mean, like they all at some point in time want love, like you would get from a dog. Like, I mean, dogs are super lovey, but cats are still willing to give you that love. Um, and they're so easy to take care of. Yeah. Dogs are needy. But they are. I think that's one of the things a lot of people like about dogs is, you know, oh, here's this creature that, that just, he needs me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> we go on walks or something and like we hear like the yippity dogs barking at us. Yip, 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 yip. And I'm like, oh, our cats are so much quieter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have an old grumpy dog who was a guest yesterday in the game of smells. Um, Yeah, (laughs) that was, (laughs) that was a thing. Um, So he used to be really yippy, but he's old now. So now he's just kind of like, go away. He, he's probably the most cat-like dog I've ever met. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh -oh. Was there anything else you want to tell us about cats or your love of them or? Um, a fun little bit. My, my female cats, the three, they love going outside. Mm -hmm. I am one of those weird people that puts my cats on a leash. I've always thought that that makes sense. They just hang out in my backyard. They don't want to go very far. They just like chilling in the grass, soaking up the sun, just like, you know, you or I would. Yeah. So I don't know. They're cool. All right. That's them. That's my, my family. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing with us. Oh, yes. So <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions about cats or cat ownership, you can shoot me an email and I will field those to Mrs. McCoy for you. And yeah, that's cats. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much for coming on today. You're welcome. Have a good day. See ya. Bye. Thanks for joining us. That's all we have for today for The Buzz. Before we go, a couple of shout outs. Mrs. Sivright wanted to give a shout out to Michael, Jake, Peyton, and Katie because they won Gim Kit today. Miracle wanted to give a shout out to her friend Lily. And Brayden wanted everybody to know that the best way to start a house of cards is to do it on a carpeted surface. So give that a shot. Don't forget to email me your pictures of your house of cards. If you want to do some shout outs, title them the buzz shout outs. That way they all go to the same place and I don't lose them. Jake Ketterman at mvcsd.us. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.